What's up, Reaction LJ fam? Today we're diving into the wild world of Dungeon and Dragon with Jin Animation. Get Are you? I'm Paul. I'm an assistant manager at Ye Old Mart of Wall. 43 years old. My wife passed away during childbirth. My parents died. And my only child, Paul Jr., ran away at age six. I'm living a deadbeat life, not even able to go up in the corporate ladder because my manager, Mark, prevents me from doing so. So here I am, drinking away my Animation. Get ready for some epic laugh and unexpected moments. This one going to be wild. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Dungeons and Dragons is like a board game without the... Before we roll the dice and dive into the adventure, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smack the like button, help me reach 500 subscribers. Let's do this together. Board and you play. Play using your imagination. If you think of something, it can just happen in game. D&D is very popular. Almost everyone I've ever met absolutely loves it, and I have never pl played it before, even though I always thought I would really like it. People would tell me stories of their games, like I've never one played time Dungeon and Dragon. Party were I gotta board, see. And you play using for, for Probably some old charity crone who's got a thing for nerds. Your imagination. If you think of something, it can just happened in game. D&D is very popular. Almost everyone I've ever met absolutely loves it, and I have never played it before, even though I always thought I would really like it. People would tell me stories of their games, like, so this one time me and my party were entering a cave, and there was a big ogre guarding some treasure, but I used my charisma stat to seduce him, and we ended up eloping together. Dude, if you don't think that sounds crazy fun, then I don't think we would get along, and you should probably oh, I don't know. I don't but know. If you do think that it, fun, I don't know if it's fun. Hey, sorry, I've never done that before. It felt weird. I decided to reach out to Charlie, aka Slimesicle, aka Charlie Slimesicle, because he's super into D and D, and we ended up forming a little group: uh -huh. me, Alpharad, Ronbu as the players, and Charlie as the dungeon master, which is like the game or. All right, being the dungeon master, it like you got all the power, all the control, and like nobody can take advantage of you. It like you got everything. In the palm of your hand, and you can't let nothing to. Uh, wait, wait, what you have? What the? What you have? What the? Organizer slash manager slash god. We all created our characters, and into the world we were teleported. Wait, wait, Jenny. Wait, 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 your characters? Lush don't, don't tell me your character was stupid. In a giant stupid. ancient oak tree can be found looming over all the other trees. Uh -huh. The inside has been hollowed out, and a sign hangs on the side reading Old Oak Inn. Inside, many creatures of various origins are relaxing, is, but drinking, no, socializing. But what but stands how it is. A cat. Equipped with various instruments, sits at a table, leaning over their cup of milk and scanning the room. They spot a dragonborn drinking at the bar, alone, seemingly pondering life. From the other end of the bar, a man in a suit approaches the dragon and starts a casual conversation. Do you know Mark? No, I, I don't. Who are you? I'm Paul. I'm an assistant manager at Ye Old Mart of Wall. 43 years old. My wife passed away during childbirth. My parents died. And my only child, Paul Jr., ran away at age six. I'm living a deadbeat life, not even able to go up in the corporate ladder because my manager, Mark, prevents me from doing so. So here I am, drinking away That's my deep. wounds. That's really deep. I'm, I'm zooed. Yeah, uh, cool. Excuse me, are, are you two new around here? Born and raised. I wish I was. Okay, um, so I, I've been stuck in a time loop for what I believe to be the past three years. I've relived the same day over and over. Uh, I, I suspect my neighbor Thomas somehow trapped me here, but I, I don't know how to escape. I, I can prove it. Look, over there. In about five seconds, there's a 70% chance a waiter is going to trip and drop their glasses onto the ground. Well, alright, it was a bit impressive, but, like, 
it's gonna take a bit more convincing because that wasn't all that. Suddenly, a sheep crashes through the tavern windows and starts rampaging around the inn. It's going straight up crazy. I don't know if it's dragon, right? Paul mentions it's got something in its mouth, and the sheep immediately. Tell down in the comment. I'm done with dragons before I'm um, be playing. God, I wanna know stops and runs straight up to him. As Paul takes what seems to be a scroll out of the sheep's mouth, Zoot whips out their mace in an attempt to pepper spray the sheep, but slips on a puddle of rum and accidentally sprays Paul, who just is disappointed at this point. The three open the scroll and Zoot, recognizing it's a speak with animals spell, translates it, casting a huge shockwave and blasting everything in its radius. Um, hello, can you understand me now? Why the f <laughs> did you try to spray me with mace? Zoot, Zoot and the sheep start bickering as Paul and Tholomew just stare at them. Just, just forget it, forget it. I'm no ordinary sheep. I used to be human and was cursed into a sheep's body. My name is Luop and I need your help becoming human again, please. All right, Lop. Well, uh, it's Luop. Come on, guys, let's go. And for some reason, they all went along with it, still not understanding what the hell is going on. Maybe, they both thought, what they the could the find their arch enemies, what? Morgan Thompson, along the way. The group I'll, is I'll go the now. The I'll go is now. very on and edge, my feeling work. like something Please. isn't quite Please. right. The tree line Listen. is shifting in unnatural ways. Oak trees are turning into birch. The bushes are rustling. Zoot spots various random animals along the path and picks up a turtle, which they add to their inventory. Inventory. Paul tries to pocket a turtle of his own, but it turns out to be a rock and is then oh, by a cougar. He ends up unharmed, though his adventure suit he changed into is now ruined. Zoot feels bad about Paul not getting a turtle, so they offer to let Paul name theirs, to which he chooses Paul Jr. They eventually reach a clearing with a large stone outcrop what? covered in what? engraved shifting rooms. Carved into a stone is a large bronze door with a face on it. Hello? You should try to impress it. Uh, oh, okay. Enter me, Riddles 3. And then you can come in. I'm a riddle door. The alphabet goes from A to Z. But I go from Z to A. Alright, so if the alphabet go A to Z and I A to Z, what who is it? I don't even know. The alphabet backwards. The answer was zebra. Who's next? Um, I'm I'm gonna say a spider because I got the butt strings. Wait, but can you turn our friend back? Oh yeah, double or nothing. Answer this next riddle, and your friend will be turned back. I creep and crawl with no eyes, legs, or ears, but I can move the earth with my peers. What am I? Uh, can you use hey. it in a sentence? Yeah. Um, the answer to the question? Yeah, like, like, spelling me style. Nice try, but you're not gonna worm your way out of this. Damn. Hmm. I, I think I picked up on it. I, I don't know if you noticed, but he said worm on accident. I'm very detail-oriented. Don't listen to him. He's a zebra. Paul Jr., what do you think the answer is? <laughs> Turtle. Turtle, final answer. It's, it's a, a worm. worm. 
The adventurers you walk through the door's purpose? mouth, which closes behind them. Why, As they're walking into the open room, room, they're greeted by a closed silver door. Zood immediately pitches the turtle at the door, but nothing happens. There's three dishes of clay placed in front of three Why pedestals, so and the door oh, face emerges yeah, once again, it. this time on the ceiling. In order to continue, create whatever you want. Not wanting to deal with more riddles, Zoot throws a dagger into the door's eye. Alright, that's some diabolical uh, stuff right there. That's diabolical. If, if I if I with the bat, I'll 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 go shoot 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 and and point and point and catch you up and point you up. That was that what I would do. Sorry, I'm not helping you with this one. The group, now lost with no direction, decides for some reason to all start eating the clay, even feeding some to Paul Jr. and Lop against their wills. After all the clay has been consumed, the pillars glow red and more clay drops down from the ceiling, resetting the puzzle. Use a full bill! Huh. Out of ideas, they decide to do what the door face suggested. Solomew sculpts a crown, Zoot rolls out a worm, and Paul builds a penguin. They all place their creations mm -hmm. on pedestals, which sink in and beam green before the lights turn out and everything goes dark. They flash back on and oh, suddenly eesh. all their creations have come to life in weird clay flesh bodies. Round one. Fight! bodies. Paul feeds at his penguin with a great axe, nearly cutting it clean in half, revealing that the inside is just more clay. Round two. Fight. More clay. The worm monster Round. looks at Zoot and says, it's wormin' time, causing Zoot to scream and sending a shockwave towards it, immediately exploding the worm and splattering clay everywhere, living as a normal-sized worm now. The worm lunges and wraps itself around Zoot's throat, trying to choke them out. Round three. Fight to choke them out. Solomon rips the arms right. off the crown monster and dodges its follow-up attack. The penguin reforms itself, sprints full speed at Paul, but slips and splats into a pile of clay on the ground, to which Paul finishes off with his axe. Meanwhile, hey. Tholomew attempts to rip the legs off the crown, only for the crown legs to turn into arms, grabbing Tholomew and climbing onto their head, causing them to lose their mind. Round four. Fight their mind, Fine, viewing right. the other party members as enemies. Paul shifts his attention to Tholomew, throwing his great axe horizontally at the crown. Unfortunately, it goes a bit low and the handle smacks Tholomew directly in the face. Zoot gets a grip on the worm, ripping it off their throat, and breathes acid onto it until it's reduced to ash. Fight. To Ash. Tholomew blows on their bagpipes to attack Paul, sending out a thunderous shockwave that shakes the cavern. Paul is able to hold his ground, runs up to the two, and successfully cleaves the crown off Tholomew's head. All but the you had monsters knock, have knock been him defeated. Out. Perfect KO! Structures, spiral staircases, platforms, and a golden door at the very back wall. It looks like a camp is set up inside the area, and voices can be heard above on one of the platforms. Tholomew scans the area, looking for traces of their neighbor, Thompson. Not only do they discover a pack of goblins that have inhabited the area, but he also recognizes a familiar boot print in the clay. It's the same type Thompson wears. He's been here. Paul climbs up to the goblin platform and sparks conversation. The goblins are confused and a bit wary of the intruders, but introduce themselves nonetheless. I'm Gob. That's Glob. That's Gobble. That's Gobble Gob. And that's... Then who's that? That's Bloil. So your names are Gob, Glob, Gobble, Gobble Gob, Peeler, and Bloil? The Peeler. Got it. So your name is The Peeler. You don't know anything about Marker Thompson. I only know about one thing. Oh boy. And that's Peeler! Ah, great, there you go. Oh, 
jeez. Okay, all right, all right, we're leaving, we're leaving. Paul starts booking it to the door they came in through. The peeler right on his tail, stabbing at his ankles. No one else is doing or saying anything. They're just watching. Paul makes it back to the previous room and the peeler slinks into the shadows. With Paul in the other room and Tholomew and Zoot unable to speak goblin, Tholomew is left trying to communicate through improvised sign language, pointing at the door and blowing kisses at the goblins to signal peace. Zoot tries to slip around the goblins in the meantime as communication is clearly not working and the goblins are only getting more aggressive, but they bump into an invisible force they can't see, alerting the goblins who are now initiating combat. Zoot decides to keep running to the door as Tholomew bangs on their drums, sending sound shock waves at the attacking goblins. Gob, Glob, and Gobble are all sent flying off the edge of okay. the platform, falling to their deaths. Gobble Gob, in a fit of rage after losing his friends, lunges but, at Tholomew but misses completely, way. sending himself off the edge of the platform to to The peeler emerges from the to, shadows uh, to lunge at Tholomew, who is taking up Loyal, but Paul jumps in just in time, clashing blades with him. As everyone is distracted, Zoot gets to the door, peeking in to see an entirely golden room with a small golden rod shaped like a tree branch floating at the center. The branch shifts between valuable materials, at one moment being made of gold, then emerald, then ruby. Gobble Gob, the goblin that accidentally dove off the side of the platform, sprints back up the stairs and attempts to tackle Dolomy off the platform, but accidentally leaps over him and plummets <laughs> How in the world do you plummet to your death again? Really, sending himself off the edge of the platform, platform but accidentally the... leaps over him and plummets really, sending himself off the edge of the platform, platform but accidentally leaps over him and plummets once again over the edge. This time, to his demise. Paul and Tholomew perform a clumsy team attack together and finish off the peeler, ending the battle, but because of the uncoordinated attack, Paul's axe is now peeled. They all hurry over to Zoot and enter that, the golden room together, trying to figure out how to get the artifact down. Zoot suggests they all toss Lop into the air to get it down, so Paul so long he bowsers the sheep into the air, but in the complete opposite direction. Tholomew oh, quickly on, runs Paul. over and breaks his fall. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Did y'all realize who they forgot? Okay, okay, y'all didn't know during the whole video. Where in the is Paul Jr. at? We gotta, we gotta pray for Paul Jr. I'm hitting their target as they both fall to the ground. No one stops Lop's fall this time as he lays motionless on the floor. As Tholomew is healing up Lop, Zoot approaches the wand, only for it to be snatched by an invisible force. An unseen figure then reveals itself. Well, hey there, neighbor. Oh, and Paul. It's me, your good friend, Mark Thompson. I knew it. <gasps> Tholomew, you ruined my life spreading false rumors about me. You said I cursed you, and now no one wants to talk to me. My wife and kids left me. Everyone avoids me. Wait, Dad? It's been years uh, between uh, the I, dark I, I, wizard, I, 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 and I'm I, gonna I, I have my know. revenge. I ain't know. What about me? And you, Paul. Anyway, yeah! You all are gonna be spending the rest of your lives here in this shift. So it it make me believe you. Ain't need to happen. Tholomew quickly casts Locate Object on the wand Mark is now holding and throws ink in the general Wait, direction. Wait, isn't it a dragon to... dungeon? And like, like y'all lose a life or something? Depend on how y'all roll or something? Right? Well, that's probably like another type of dungeon dragon, right? I don't know. ...where Mark is, but unfortunately it was a land. Zoot sprints in the direction Tholomew indicated and attempts to tackle the air. They make contact, but bounce off of Mark's rock-solid beer gut, breaking the invisibility spell. Tholomew whips out their drums, slamming it with the intent to cast a thunder wave on Mark, sending him flying from the impact. Zoot follows behind and shouts, DEPRESSION! Casting a command spell on him, he stops in his tracks, facing Zoot, and says, I'm so sad. Having never dealt with depression before, he pulls out a picture of his ex-wife and kids and just stares at it, 
longingly. Paul and Tholomew see their chance to attack him and once again try to use an ultimate team attack. They grip Paul's peeled axe together and throw it in tandem at Mark. But once again, they mess up and Tholomew is accidentally sent flying with the axe as it pierces Mark's chest. Mark is unfazed, still wallowing in his depression, but Zoot sees this as an opportunity, casting disguised self and visually turning themselves into Mark's ex-wife. Ella, is that you? It is! Uh, Mark. Mark drops the photo and wand, sobbing, and slowly walks towards Zoot, who has their arms out, ready for his embrace. He grabs Zoot and pulls them close, tears streaming down his face. It's, it's been so hard. I... It's okay. I'm here now. <laughs> Zoot pulls back. Just a bit, just to look into Mark's eyes, which are sparkling with tears. And proceeds to acid blast him point blank from the mouth. <laughs> Mark is heavily damaged, but alive, snapping back to reality. And picks up one part of his peeled axe. Looks like the manager position just opened up. He throws the axe and hits Mark, but doesn't kill him. He then picks up the other peeled axe part to throw as well, but it boomerangs around and hits him in the back of the head. Tholomew grabs the wand from the ground and points it at Mark. This is for everything. The low tax return. The restraining order for moving in next to me. You're my personal hell! Mark turns to Paul while being zapped by the wand. Would you still let me be your manager, even if I was a... You're fired. You guys did it! Please, use the wand to turn me back into a human. Please! Tholomew casts the wand's powers on Talop, finally turning him back into his original form. Paul and now human Luop lock eyes. Hi, Dad. Paul Jr. Is that you? Oh, no. Paul and his long lost son. So in a larp. Wait, Paul, that was a larp. Explain to me down in the comment who would Paul actually spell backwards. Paul Jr. embrace. The wand, now all out of magic, crumbles into dust, and the party exits the cave. The bomb is dead, and the explosions are up behind them as the group walks off together. Wow, what a hilarious and epic journey through Dungeon and Dragon with Jenny. I didn't expect, and that just made the whole thing so much better. What was your favorite part? Part. Drop it in the comment below and let's talk about it. If you enjoyed this adventure, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more epic reactions. Trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next.